Hi, welcome to a Cointelegraph interview coming to you from Davos in Switzerland. On my left is Paolo Arduino, CTO of Bitfinex and Tether. Paolo, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you very much for having me again. No, it's my pleasure. Every time we always have a nice chat. Um, so as I understand it, you've just come off the plane from Oslo where the Freedom Forum was taking place. And there were lots of prominent Bitcoiners such as yourself, Alex Gladstein, Jack Marlers, Obi, I could go on, who were discussing there. And here we are at the WEF, the World Economic Forum. How do the World Economic Forum and the Oslo Freedom Forum, how do they compare or contrast? Definitely doing both of them in the same week has been quite interesting, right? So uh, I was glad to be invited at the Oslo Freedom Forum mm -hmm. because, first of all, it's not the usual uh, cryptocurrency um, event, yeah. right? There were no boots, no one was trying to sell you anything. That's a, that, that's a good thing. No one was shilling anything? No, no, no shilling. Okay. And uh, the event was not a Bitcoin event. There were Bitcoiners, but for the first time, the Bitcoiners were there to learn. Right, so there were activists, journalists from uh, coming from uh, places where the freedom of speech is not something that you can give for granted, and all that was really interesting. Right, so you need to hear that. You need to understand. It is a good reminder why the entire Bitcoin movement was created. Right, to bring financial freedom mm -hmm. and freedom of transact to people that are not as lucky as the one living in the Western countries. Yeah. And uh, the fact that Tether was invited to talk was for me really important, right? Tether has been adopted by um, uh, the NUG, that is uh, the parallel government in Myanmar, the one that is in exile, that is fighting for the freedom of the country as legal tender. Tether has been um, accepted by the Ukrainian government at the start of the war to accept funding. Yeah. Right, it was one of the three currencies: Bitcoin, Ether, and uh, Tether. Mm -hmm. So, and it was also the fastest, right, in terms yeah. of getting the money into the country. Cryptocurrency or Bitcoin and Tether was the fastest way to do so, right? Exactly. So, for we are seeing Tether more and more being used as an instrument of freedom. Mm -hmm. So, our actual uh, use case to exist, the reason to exist for Tether is it started from being a currency and a stable coin used for settling crypto transactions, but it grew a lot recently in being one of the tools to be used by distressed countries where the national currency is devaluating, yeah. where people want an edge against the insane inflation that yeah. they have, right? In Turkey, the national currency, the Turkish lira, has been devaluated 50% over the last few months. Yeah. and um, in Argentina, you have the same problem and so on and so forth. So, and Venezuela, it, it, uh, the same thing. So, we we are seeing Tether reaching its um, apex in something that uh, in being something that people need for their day life yeah. to protect themselves, to protect their savings. Bitcoin is great, but they want the price stability. They want the long-term price stability. They, they understand, right? Bitcoin is great for many things, but is not yet understood by many. Could you say that Tether is almost like a gateway drug to Bitcoin in this context? It's, it's definitely the best ramp ever created. So okay. is, is, it's the best orange peeling tool. Yes. It, my father, right, understands much more. Um, so he now is in Bitcoin. But he had first to feel the digital cash, right? And crazy enough, people are all money, the majority of the money is already digital. But they are not used to have it in a wallet that can, you know, with one click they can send around and it's super fast and arrive in a minute, right? They are used to a wire that takes days to clear. And so there is the first step is education, education on the change of technology, yeah. and that is really important. And then there is a second step that is education on why we need Bitcoin, that is a hedge, a better hedge against inflation, is, um, is something that no one can take away from you, yeah. is something that holds a lot of uh, philosophy and ethos in it, right? So, Yes, it's yeah. orange peeling. But there you're talking about developing countries. And here we are in one of the most developed, one of, these, one of the most free countries around the world. And yet it's also the city in the southwest called Lugano, um, where the Plan B project is. They're adopting Bitcoin and Tether as de facto legal tender. Yeah. Um, I was speaking to Mauro, who had a pizzeria here on a Bitcoin pizza day on Sunday. 
And I asked him, Mauro, uh, you know, how's it going in Lugano? Are you accepting Bitcoin and Tether yet? And he was like, no, but I plan to. And I said, okay, I'll hold you to that. I'll come down there and I'll check. So how is the plan B coming along? And is it just pizzerias? Is this a sort of a hard back to your Italian roots? <laughs> no, it's not just pizzerias, although of course pizzerias will be the first step. <laughs> but um, sure. actually the, uh, the plan B is going great. So we just announced the summer school. We are holding this event that is a two weeks course where we have speakers of uh, like uh, Adam Beck and, uh, and others that are explaining and teaching blockchain and um, cryptocurrency in this modern financial world. Okay. And we didn't want to do something extremely technical yeah. because we want to, wanted also to explain why this, is exi why this movement, why this uh, crypto movement have even started. Yeah. Right? So we wanted to, to, to put together an event, uh, a, a course yeah. that could teach a, a bit about blockchain from the technical level, high level uh, technical level, the philosophy, the economics yeah. uh, around it and so on and so forth. And then of course entering a little bit into the details, there is a lightning network teaching on how to use nodes, how to set up things and how to use it for payments and so on and so forth. Is El Salvador listening out for these conversations? Thinking, oh, maybe we could implement that education in El Salvador. Actually, so we are working with El Zonte Capital to, ah, okay. um, to try to bring these very same courses, well maybe in a different way, um, uh, based on the, you know, Know, on the um, type of approach that we are going there, so we want to have. So one side you have need developers in the country. On the other side, you need people that use it for the their the, the activity. So you have to teach a little bit of economics, mm -hmm. mm, a little bit of background on, on what we are doing, why we are doing it. So okay. uh, the the contrast between El Salvador and uh, and Lugano for me is beautiful because it really tells that Bitcoin is for everyone. Yeah. Right? You you have uh, people in a poor country that are that need Bitcoin as the, a basic financial infrastructure. Yeah. On the other side, you have probably the, 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 the country that is crawling with more with banks in the world and still... I they, mean, just look around. Yes, and they, would, they still need Bitcoin because yeah. it's, um, it's a sovereign country. Oh, you are, you are become, becoming uh, the sovereign person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the choice of pizza topping from Satoshi Nakamoto, just to go back to the pizza point, is uh, jalapenos and pineapple, I think. I just wanted to get your take <laughs> on this. Yeah, I mean... Is, is this your yes or no? No one is perfect, you know. Okay. <laughs> this so. is Satoshi's one fatal flaw. He, yes, of course. That's why yeah. he what, disappeared in 2012. Oh, really? You came yes. after him? You're yeah. like, <laughs> why are you putting pineapple on pizza, Satoshi? Um, what's your favorite pizza topping? So I like the one with, um, how you said it in English, uh, salami? Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, um, a spicy salami. Oh, and, diavolo. No? Yeah, la diavola. diavola. I put an egg on top of it. Oh, nice. So, egg, diavola, egg, yeah. and a little bit of um, mozzarella di bufala instead oh, okay. of standard mozzarella. So, wow. that is insanely good. So, this is what I'll eat when I come to Lugano yes. in the next I will. I will bring you to the best place that where they do this pizza. Okay, great. Okay. And if I ever do bump into Satoshi, I'll you know, <laughs> let him know that Paolo is ready to take him to any pizzeria in Lugano. Yeah. It's education. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's the key. Brilliant. Thank you so much. This has been a Coin Telegraph interview with Paolo Arduino.